Welcome to the Five Star Retirement Show with Patrick Mueller, best selling co author of Dare to Succeed and president of Bella Advisors. Today, he'll be sharing his five star retirement formula, including lifetime income planning, investment planning, tax planning, healthcare planning, and legacy planning. Here's Chris Monroe and Patrick Mueller. We say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it might be that you are joining us. Thank you for doing so, and welcome to another edition of Five Star Retirement. I'm your host, Chris Monroe, and we all know that we want five stars over one star. You know, maybe when I was in college, uh, a one-star hotel was okay, a one-star restaurant, but now we want quality, and it means more then just a quality retirement, it means five different facets of your retirement planning and execution that are so important. I'm your host, Chris Monroe, alongside Patrick Mueller, who is the proprietor, the man, the founder, and the focus of Bella Advisors in Roswell, Georgia, beautiful uh, Roswell area. Welcome back in. Always good to be with you. Likewise, likewise. You always make me feel so good. Uh, make that's me feel so that's, good my, that's why they pay me the big bucks, Patrick, is to, is to make you look good, which you need no help. And, you know, just, just putting you out there. But I, I really sincerely mean, you know, I, I love what you do, the heart that you have for people. And we're going to talk a little bit today about the uh, the five stars that, that you kind of, you know, build your entire business on mm-hmm. and, and walking people through their retirement. You know, we were, we were talking about, you know, some of the best conversations happen, you know, off mic or behind the scenes or during commercial breaks. We're talking about uh, health inspection reports at restaurants. You know, we we want a one, we don't want a one star restaurant with a thirty five, with a two ninety nine buffet. That's not the kind of retirement that we want. You don't like the two ninety nine buffets? I, the price is good, but I'm I'm a little weary. You know, I, right. I'm a little weary, and I think you <laughs> yeah, should be too. That's right. Now, don't tell me you've been eating the the two ninety nine buffets. No, right no. Yet. Actually, I can't remember the last time I ate a buffet. When's the last time you ate a buffet? I I can't remember. Like the Golden Corral trough. Oh, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. Golden yeah. Corral. I bet that was the last yeah. buffet. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. It's pretty good. No, it's good. But speaking fried, of eating that food. That fried chicken. Mm, making me hungry. Right we're, oh, man. Tell me about that. Here we are going into, you know, Thanksgiving week. So I know a lot of people are, you know, getting ready to travel. You know, a lot of people are going to be on the roads uh, going home to grandma's, um, you know, to get that turkey and, and stuffing and, you know, tryptophan and football and all of that stuff. Family arguments. Family arguments. You know, I wonder if if money is one of those things that comes up at some of these. You know, politics has got to be number one. I bet. Yeah, I mean, because there's always somebody that wants to tell you what to do. Right. So <laughs> right. there's some family member that knows, you know, the uncle that knows and seen done everything twice and is going to tell you what to do with your money. And Is mm-hmm. there, you know, Norman Rockwell, you know, we, we, we think we, you know, it's those memes that says, you know, uh, what people think it's going to be like, and in reality, what it's like, you know, and then of course, what we think it's going to be like is a Norman Rockwell painting, mm-hmm. and then it's not. It's it's Uncle Joe trying to deep fry the turkey, setting the garage on fire. Um, it's spraining your ankle because you think that you're still a 23 year old uh, running back, you know, from your college football team, and you now you're 60, and you know. So it's uh it's it's those kind of things, but but a lot to be thankful for. Certainly, you know we've we've had a great economy, um the last couple of years, um you know record highs in the stock market. A lot of people who are looking at their retirement portfolios with you, Patrick, are are happy with what they see right now. For sure, I mean we, we're here. We are. We're in the longest bull run in stock market history. It's been over a decade since our last big downturn. It's hard to believe it's been so long. It's been since 2008. That was the big so, one of the housing crash and everything. That was that was 08, right? That was that, yep. The, okay, yeah, yeah, that was 08. So the the longest. So the next two times that were the longest bull runs in stock market history was 1929, right, right before the Great Depression started, right. and then the year 2000 when the tech bubble burst, and then here we are now, we're at all time highs in stock market history. And what I'm seeing is people getting really complacent that the stock market is just always supposed to go up, and it's and not. The, no, no, no. So, yeah, we wanted to, right? But, we wanted but, to. But everybody feels like a financial genius right now because right. you could throw a dart at a dartboard and, you know, hit something if you just had a list of different investments up there and they would have made money. Well, and that's exactly the, the kind of uh, euphoria they got into in, in the in the 20s. Mm-hmm. You know, was literally every every time people put money in a stock, it they doubled their money. You know, so who's not going to be just, you know, just going after that? So, um 
you know, as as we get into the the Thanksgiving time, I know a lot of people's attention is going to turn to, you know, I, I was going to say putting Christmas decorations up, but those go up in July now. So I mean, you know, we, they're they're already up. I was driving through Buckhead this morning, and you know, everything's decorated for Christmas well, or a week already, out. Yeah, you guys were already playing Christmas music when I walked into the I, studio, right? We had What's the Christmas music in here, and you know, the stores put their stuff out in August now. So we we haven't even gotten to Thanksgiving yet, but. You know, it, it's something that um, as we look at 2020 and we start to think about, uh, you know, the planning for the new year, this needs to be on people's plates. What do you? What is your thinking? I mean, obviously, crystal ball type of thing. You know, in the advisement world of of finance, are are people worried about this this bubble? Is that kind of the? It's about fifty fifty. I would okay. say with, with people that I'm, I'm meeting with. So you got some people that, and you got to realize that the folks that we typically work with are either on the home stretch of retiring or they're typically retired. But a lot of times, either people have the euphoria that the markets are just going to keep going and they're going to get a while to get them good, and then you got a lot of people that are like, "Man, wh- when should we be getting our money out and repositioning it?" And so, a good rule of thumb for people to have is something called the rule of one hundred. So the rule of one hundred is take whatever your age is. And that should be the amount of your life savings. It's in things that are safe and pr- protected from loss. So stuff that is not in the stock market. So you got to have your protected money because nobody knows when that downturn is going to be. My crystal ball works as good as everybody else's crystal ball that, that's out there. But it's, having, it's about having your stuff in the right places, having the right buckets of money working for you over time. And so for an example, if somebody's 50 years old, then 50% of your money should be in things that are safe and protected from loss. So you're not going to lose your money in. And then the other 50%, it's okay to take some risk with. And as you get older, it's moving more, as you get older, it's moving more towards that safety side. So you're keeping more and more protected because it's not about growing so much anymore when you're retiring. It's about how do you protect that money and then how do you create the income from it? The income stream, sure. To, to maintain your lifestyle right. that you want to be living for however long that's going to be. What do you What do you see when people come in? I mean, or, or do you see a bunch of people that are way over- leveraged in the stock market Big for their time. age. So that, that seems to be the, you know. Yeah, probably about 75% of the folks that wow. I sit down with, they have 90 plus percent of their money on the stock market. And then you get some people that have gotten burned in the past or really scared of the markets and they just have all their money sitting at cash. So it's almost kind of equally as terrible where uh, or as bad because. So they're getting no. They're, they're getting nothing. No, nothing. They're, they're going backwards. They're not keeping up with inflation. They're right. losing purchasing power. That's what I call unemployed money. We got to give that money a job. Well, and that's you want your, you know, I always said that you want the money to work for you. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's important. And you might have some time coming, you know, for the holiday break coming up. I know I'm going to be taking some time off and, and you might have some time. What a great time to call Bella Advisors, sit down with Patrick and and really go through your financial and retirement situation. And the number to reach him is 770-545-8881, 770-545-8881. And bellaadvisors.com. Um, you know, get a time for a free consultation. It's that free deep dive into someone's, you know, retirement planning, whether they're mm-hmm. 10 years out, five years out, or whether they're already in retirement and they may be like, yeah, this doesn't feel right. You know, we've got some changes that we need to make. And that's that's really what your focus is, right, at Bella Advisors? Well, that's exactly what we do. We do retirement, real retirement planning for folks. We're, we're investment advisors as well if we if you want us to help out with stuff. But the main thing is we got to have a plan, and we got to understand where you're at. you got to understand where you're at, the current path that you're on right now for retirement or in retirement. And it's amazing because in, in this industry, it's a really weird industry because you basically just got a bunch of salespeople that call themselves advisors. Uh, I, I was meeting with this lady last week and she went to one guy and this one guy you sold her an annuity and she went in for her annual review and the guy didn't want to give her any time until she knew that, you know, she had, he knew that she had more cash available to be able to invest. And then all of a sudden he became very interested and he was like, I think we should schedule another time to get back together and, and do this review. And then she's got this other guy that's at another big institution that is just trying to figure out ways to get more money from the other guy and, and put it with him. And, and they're just trying to sell something. But you got nobody that's out there actually trying to figure out the real problems of people in retiring. And we're, we're going to talk about that in the next segment, too. Yeah. And, and I think that's important. And one of the things, you know, we, we call the, the show Five Star Retirement. And each of the stars has a specific meaning toward re- planning and then, you know, revising the plan as it, as it were to go forward. And when we get to the next segment, we're going to talk a little bit about that. And, and I think that's so important. And you're exactly right. What I always say the heart of a, of, of a servant and not, you know, or, you know, and not the heart of a salesperson. Mm-hmm. But most of these people are coming at you trying to sell something, you know, and that's, 
That's what sets Bella Advisors apart. And that's why you should call 770-545-8881, 770-545-8881. Get on the schedule with Patrick. And it might be a good idea before the you know new year, before we start making all these resolutions we won't keep. Go ahead and resolve now to something that's this important. You know, as is getting make making sure that your retirement uh, portfolio and, and your entire not only just the portfolio but the planning too. And we talked about this um, last time, Patrick. Figuring out what retirement means to you because that's different from for, for every, everybody. For everybody, for sure. You know, it's it's so so different. Um, and in figuring out what it is that you're working toward. And, you know, when you can finally say goodbye to uh, the boss that you may not like very much or the job that you may not like in Atlanta traffic every day, which none of us likes, you know, what that looks like. So we'll be talking a little bit about uh, coming up. Also, some uh, turkey and dressing recipes. And no, I'm kidding. We will. <laughs> we could talk about that if you want to. We can always talk about, you know, some turkey tips. I think we should. OK. I think All right. we should. If you've got turkey tips, Especially you know, like deep fried turkey. I've heard a lot about these deep fried turkeys and I've I, never had. I've deep never fried had turkey. it either. I've never. This and is, I and I want one. And it is, sounds amazing. This is going to be the first year I'm going to have some. deep fried. You're going to have some deep fried turkey this yeah. year. OK. I, I right. might even try it myself. I, I will expect some to be brought in here to the Fancy oh, Bell Advisor yeah. Studios. Okay. Um, I'm just yeah. saying, you know, we want to make sure that uh, you know, take care of all your folks. And we got some great folks behind the scenes here, too, that I know. Yeah, they're shaking their heads. They want deep fried turkey. So, all right. 770-545-8881 is the number. Stay tuned because coming back, we're going to talk about uh, planning as we go into the Thanksgiving holiday toward the end of the year and what those five stars mean. Coming up next here on Five Star Retirement. Thank you for staying with us here at Five Star Retirement, brought to you by Bella Advisors. Chris Monroe and Patrick Mueller of Bella Advisors. We're talking Five Star Retirement, and we're going to talk turkey today, too, because, well, it is Thanksgiving, and we want to, you know, I mean, look, who doesn't want to uh, to talk about turkey and yeah. dressing and even the cranberry sauce that you slide out of a can that oh, still yeah. has the rings around? <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. It's, it wouldn't be right. It, it wouldn't be, be right, right without, the, uh, without that. So... I, I want to hit on, um, and we do this in some of the shows, but for, for people that are, are, are new to our stream, to our videos, or to the radio show here, to talk about what five-star means. And I think it means, you know, to a lot of people, we think about a five-star uh, B&B or a restaurant, you know, uh, on a Michelin rating type of thing, and, you know, what that means. I mean, we, we equate five stars on Yelp or any of the other things with, with being highly rated. Mm-hmm. But it, it it means that, but it means something else too, and I want you to talk about that. Yeah, it means a little bit more when when you're retiring because you got to make sure you got all five stars. Because if you don't have all five of these stars in your retirement plan, then there could be issues. You you could be facing some problems. How many so, stars do most people have out of these that we're going to talk like about? Like one, one, maybe, maybe okay. two. Like one, maybe two stars typically. Uh, but we got to make sure we got something in place for for all five stars. And a lot of times it's because people don't want to think about all five stars. And so I'll kind of go through with you and tell okay. you, you know, what, what these five stars are. So the first star we want to have is an income plan when you're retiring, which is basically replacing your paycheck is what it is. Because retirement, there's another word for it. It's unemployment. You're unemployed now for the next 25, 30 plus years. So how in the world do you make that work? People are living a third of their lifetime now in retirement. So most people's income plan is... Patrick, I've accumulated this big pile of money or investments, and I'm just going to reach in and take money out whenever I need it. So there really isn't much of a plan. And so we got to have a structured income plan to make sure that we know when and where that money is going to be coming in from. And it's not just if the markets go up every single year, that's our income plan. So then that ties into the investments. How are the investments designed to help you accomplish that? So how much risk are you currently taking? What is your money in? Is it diversified in enough asset classes? How much of it is safe? How much of it is at risk? We got to understand this stuff. How much are you paying in fees? And then we got your tax plan where I, I, I haven't really met very many people that really love paying more taxes than they should. And nobody's really talking to folks about tax planning and making sure you're keeping money in your pocket now because people think their tax rate's going to go lower when they're in retirement and they don't realize how complex it actually really gets when you're in retirement and you can actually end up paying more in taxes than you are currently. And then you've got Healthcare planning, making sure if you got to go into assisted living, nursing home care, chronic care, something like that, home health care, that that's covered, and then legacy planning. 
making sure whatever you haven't spent throughout your whole lifetime, that now that's going to get to your family the way that you intended to. So that covers all five stars there. And if you got a problem in any one of those different areas, we need to know about that now and, and be able to fix that. You know, you often say that the first time that you do something typically isn't the best, but people only typically retire one time, maybe unless they go back into the workforce, they might get it. But you only get one first retirement Mm -hmm. where you start taking Social Security, where you, you know, you start taking required minimum distributions or whatever, and you set up this plan. And you can make a lot of big mistakes if you don't know what you don't know. And, and I, you know, just thinking about, Myself, and I'm 47, so I'm a ways from retirement, hopefully. Um, you know, we'll see. Um, that, you know, that the I how many of that have I really thought? I haven't really thought through through much of that. And yeah. I would I would venture to say people that are 10 years older than me M- or most more, people don't until they're maybe maybe like five years away from retiring. Or maybe maybe they're a year or so or they're retired and they really haven't even thought about it. So the the people that, that you see, are they typically uh, in retirement, or are they typically five years out, or or, or where, where, when should they come see you? What's the what's the best time to come? I see mean, you? typically within probably five to ten years from retiring is okay. probably a good time to be thinking about it. I would say, if you're really there's never um, too soon to plan, right? There's no to put a plan together, at least have some kind of direction that you're going to be going into. But I would say ten years away from retiring, or you know, definitely within that that five year mark, we call that the red zone of retirement. The retirement red zone. Retirement I like that. I can zone. see some Fox Sports uh, Deportes. <laughs> you know, I, I can I, I see graphics here for the <laughs> retirement red zone. So um, I know I like that. And so let's go. Let's go through the five stars again. So it's uh-huh. income, uh huh, investments, investments, taxes, taxes, healthcare. All right, and legacy. Okay, so all of those things, and, and think about in your own personal situation. This may have sparked something that you can actually talk about something coming up in your Thanksgiving dinner that is beneficial to, you know, saying, hey, you really should call Patrick at Bella Advisors. These are things that we really need to talk about, you know, when when if you're if you're uh, going to be seated at the adult table and not the kid table, which I think I'd still rather be sitting at the kid table, quite honestly. Yeah, yeah don't take the advice from Uncle Joe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Call, call, call Bella Advisors. Don't call Uncle Joe. I've got this uh, IPO that I've been getting into, and I want to, you know, and that's a lot of people, that's where they get their financial advice mm-hmm. from. You know, and and they get their retirement advice. So, yeah, especially now, everybody's getting into the cannabis stocks and all the things that are kind of hot or you know whatever. It's that always might be the flavor of the day. It's always something. It's yeah. always the the latest you know stock or IPO or and all of that. And a lot of people chase that, and it's just not the way to to think about your retirement. All right, so let's talk about Thanksgiving memories. Oh man, some great Thanksgiving memories. If you have some, I've got one that that's pretty funny. As we talk about, uh, as we talk about uh, Thanksgiving coming up here, uh, yeah, I've got. Well, this 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 comes to mind, and it actually ended up being some of the best turkey I've ever eaten. But right. I had a friend of mine that the the secret to keeping it moist was putting it in a paper bag. Well, the paper bag got grease and everything all over it, and so it ended up catching on fire and in the <laughs> oven. So there's flames. So wait, wait a second. There's, there's they, they thought it was a good idea to put a paper bag. Around the turkey. Around the turkey. Around the turkey. And in the oven. And in the oven. Okay. So it ended up catching on fire. And uh, so we, yeah. So we ended up getting the fire put out. And <laughs> in the apartment that I was in at the time, there's smoke all through the apartments and all the windows and everything are open. Right, the right, apartment right. stunk for weeks a- a- after the fact. But the turkey was really moist. I mean, it was really moist and it was actually really good turkey. We almost burned down 50 but, people's homes, but right. <laughs> by golly, that turkey was moist. So, so as far as <laughs> Thanksgiving memories, that, that's one. That one comes to mind. We, I remember there was one year that my mom did not want to cook. Oh, our producer is uh, putting up pictures of, of turkey here on, <laughs> on, the, on the screen over here. We're looking, oh man, that looks good. Yeah, that's making me laugh. That's a, you know, wow. Um, my mom didn't want to cook and she said, all right, we're going to go out to eat. And this was years ago when there wasn't a whole bunch of stuff that was open on Thanksgiving. And we just thought we would wing it. Okay. So we went to a couple of places. Ah, I say we went to, we went, we went all over looking for a place that was open. So we ended up at Denny's. We ended up at Denny's where we had frozen peas, instant mashed potatoes, yeah. and some sort of turkey like substance with, uh, with fake gravy over it. So that was one of my oh, and it snowed that day too. It was a freak little little. Oh man, it didn't stick, but it, it was a it was a weird Thanksgiving. I'll just never forget Thanksgiving that, dinner at Denny's. At Denny's, 
at, at Denny's. Yeah. How could you forget that? And we had some beautiful Thanksgivings, too. You know, I, I it think. It was probably, fu- I mean, it had to have been really funny, too. Oh, it was hilarious. It was fantastic. It was It was actually my mom, you know, which she's no longer with us, but she laughed about that for years. And it was just giving her a break. Um, for a lot of them, we started to uh, go to Piccadilly or uh, Morrison's Cafeterias here in, in Metro Atlanta. They will, they'll do the whole feast for you, and you just go pick it up. That's 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 what I'm talking about. Then you don't have to do that because think about all the pressure that we put into this perfect oh, Thanksgiving yeah. feast, uh-huh. you know, and all this this time and effort for a, literally about because for some reason dinner time on Thanksgiving Day is two thirty. I who, who I don't know why that's the case, but anyway, you put all this and then you for about fifteen minutes of eating and probably hours of uh, of strife with your in laws. That reminds me of another Thanksgiving, where let me I'm gonna, well, let me give the number I'll, and then we'll do it seven seven zero five four five eighty eight eighty one seven seven zero five four five eighty eight eighty one. Um, I've almost got it memorized. And then BellaAdvisors.com on the web. That's how you're going to touch with Patrick. Not only is he going to help you not burn your kitchen down, he is going to make sure that you have a moist turkey that you have a, and he's going to guarantee this as part of his package to you. So, you know, I mean, it's, it just behooves you. So go ahead. I'm sorry. What was your, I mean, yeah. For, for how about this for our next five callers? We'll, uh, we'll throw in a free turkey. How All right. That? All right. How's that? All right. I think that's, I think that's pretty good. Got to ask for it. Right. Got to yeah. ask for the free turkey deal. Yep. When you call up to say gobble, gobble. And you have to say, we'll give you free turkey. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, 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 that's for the, good. Yeah, for the first five callers, we'll do that. All right. I like it. I like it. Good. Yeah. Uh, that reminds me, do you remember the WKRP? I Cincinnati? was just <laughs> about to think about that. Yes, I do. Yeah. Goodness. As God is my witness, I thought turkeys could fly. For these younger guys that are our producers, there was a there was a show called WKRP in Cincinnati. It was it was based at a radio station. <clears throat> well, the promotion was they were going to uh, let turkeys go from the helicopter, from the traffic helicopter. Well, turkeys can't fly, and the, the end result was <laughs> it was pleasant. a turkey apocalypse. <laughs> turkey, it, it was it was bad. So anyway. That was and that and what a great show too. Les Nessman. And by the way, for those of you who are, are never been in a radio station or in, I it 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 you can go look it up. I'm sure on any of the the online. But WKRP was actually pretty darn accurate. It was pretty accurate. So no, I'm just saying it was it's about that crazy in radio. So seven seven zero five four five eighty eight eighty one bellaadvisors dot com. Coming up, a very important subject that we need to talk about. And and uh, just ahead of Thanksgiving, this is this is more important. The uh, favorite side dishes for your Thanksgiving feast. Ooh, controversy abounds here. I bet, I bet. But we'll see what the favorite is. We'll tell you what mine is, what Patrick's is. That and more investment advice and helping you live a five star retirement. Stay with us. That's coming up next. Welcome back to Five Star Retirement and the Thanksgiving Feast Edition here. I'm Chris Monroe alongside Patrick Mueller of Bella Advisors, and um, we're talking off mic. You know, it's funny. There's some there's some staples of when we think about Thanksgiving and, and the first Thanksgiving with the pilgrims and the turkey and the, the kind of staples. But, you know, I guess regionally there's probably some differences, you know, uh, in how things are prepared and that kind of thing, depending on what part of the country you're in. So, we're talking about the favorite sides. We're going to get to that in just a minute. So you have to stay with us so you can find out all of our favorite sides, our video and audio producer, yours and mine. And then uh, and we still have that free turkey offer going, though, right? We do. We do. Yeah. For the yeah for the five people call and schedule up a time to come on in for a visit and analysis. We're going to what throw size in a, turkey? We're going to throw in a free turkey. I mean, I personally think you need at least a 15 pound. I turkey. think that's minimum. I, think I mean, that's I, I feel like a 15-pound yeah, no, turkey, I, you need a big turkey. Yeah. 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 Go big or go home. That's big, what I was big turkey for a big turkey. Yeah, right? We're talking that's turkey. What... <laughs> we're talking turkey today. <laughs> All right. Did you have turkey? Yeah, we drive. yeah, well, that's true. That's true. That's, I forgot about that. That's an old saying. We're, we're dating ourselves. Did I have turkey? That reminds me of, uh, do you remember Airplane? Oh, what a great movie. Yeah. Such a good movie where, um, you know, they're, they're like, uh, does anybody speak jive here on the plane? And then the, you know, the what was it? The lady from Leave It to Beaver? Was it? Oh, was uh, it? Uh, Barbara Billingsley. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, she's like, I speak jive. That, yeah. And then she calls the guy jive turkey. Jive turkey? That was hilarious. Yeah. But you know what's funny is that, uh, not to get too much on, people would find that offensive today, and it would trigger someone, and, and they'd have to go play with Play-Doh and cry somewhere <laughs> or something right. like that. Yeah, I, I, I promise you, at one point in our society, folks, and, and those of you that are that they're listening to the show are probably old enough to know that we we did have a sense of humor at one point. In our, in our, uh, you know, and I feel like we can again. I feel like I we hope can, so. I hope so too. I hope so. And you know, and and I would say that you know, giving some just off the cuff advice, you know, for Thanksgiving coming up, it's just keep the topics light. You know, it's it's there, there's a lot of differences in. There's always been differences in in politics. You know, no matter who's been in the White House, but. You know, social media has given rise to everybody having their own platform, their own TV and radio station, mm-hmm. you know, and, and with, with their editorial comments. You know, so what are some things that, that we could talk about, you know, outside of uh, politics at the, at the dinner table that are, that are not, you know, in, inflammatory? Well, I mean, well, you just brought something up earlier, like different regions for different things that you're cooking for Thanksgiving. Do yeah. you think that more turkeys are deep fried in the South than other parts of the country? I don't know. I don't know, but I can guarantee you that our uh, our crack research team is Johnny on the spot right now. They're gonna they're gonna figure out are more turkeys deep fried. And to this day, and I think we both said this, we have neither of us has had deep, deep fried, fried turkey. turkey. I've, now I've had one of those huge turkey legs at like the uh, Renaissance Festival. Yep. And it's never as good as you think it's going to be. That's yeah, okay. Because I don't like dark meat all that much. And it's, you know, it's it's more of a, the, the, the turkey legs or the drumsticks are, are dark meat. So, but I, I wonder if, if uh, yeah, and you got to be careful with that. You know, you've got to be careful with trying to uh, deep fat fried turkey for the first time. Because that's, that's. I wonder if anybody's gotten hit over the head. Like somebody got in an argument and somebody tried to beat the other person over the head with one of those huge drumsticks. Like the <laughs> Renaissance Fair or. I, some... yes. I, I would imagine that. I would think that. If, Probably has happened. I can tell a lot of people listening or watching right now are, like, shake, what, are shaking their head. They, they what, know. What happened to you, Joe? How'd you get a black eye? Well, uh, was turkey the accident. Was the well, it was, a, it was yeah. a turkey accident. So, All right, so let's talk about the favorite side dishes of, uh, of Thanksgiving here. All right, so. I'm ready. What do you think the number one? What do you think number one's going to be? I, I don't know. I mean, it's got to be something starchy, something with a lot of carbs. Yes. Well, I mean, everything at Thanksgiving has a lot of carbs except for the turkey, just about. But so. it's got, what, what is it? What's the chemical the turkey has in it? The tryptophan. Tryptophan. That makes you sleepy. Do you remember that Seinfeld episode where they wanted to play with the toys? I do. And so they, I do. <laughs> they gave the lady turkey and wine. Now we have, we have all sorts of uh, turkey videos being shown here that we, we cannot show uh, here in the general populace. Or oh, if you're listening on radio, you wouldn't be able to see them anyway. All right, so our audio producer Sam is uh, his favorite. Well, you want to go down the list first? Let's go down. Let's yes. go down the list. All right, so number ten is sweet potato pie. I'm kind of meh. I'm okay with that. I like. I like me some sweet potatoes. All right, so you yeah, like you all right. Like a sweet potato right. casserole. All right, guys, what are, what are be, we thinking over there? Off the chain. All right, crescent rolls. Absolutely, man. Mm-hmm. There's nothing. You pop that. Get that little, pop, pop you, you, fresh. Put, you know, you, you stick. Oh man, crescent rolls with some real butter on there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. you can fill up on those. Maybe even some apple butter on it. Oh mm. man. All right. Number eight is baked sweet potatoes. And that was our uh, audio producer, Sam. That That's his favorite. Right. All right. So baked sweet potatoes. Uh, number eight, corn on the cob is number seven. I don't, we've I, never served I, corn on the cob. I don't think I've ever had corn on the cob for Thanksgiving. No, I haven't either. Haven't either. Uh, number six is the old standby that I think it came out of a, a magazine in the fifties or something, uh, to sell more, uh, cream of mushroom soup. And that's exactly why it was done is the green bean casserole. Is that right? I, I mean, pretty much I mean, it was a, uh, it was a I mean, Campbell's, uh, you know, it was probably, in a in a woman's magazine. It's been around forever, but it was to sell more cream of mushroom soup because what else do you use cream of mushroom soup for? You yeah. know, you think about it. So, all right, that's number six. Uh, number five is another one that we've never served, uh, unfortunately, at uh, at our house is uh, mac and cheese for Thanksgiving. Oh, man. What's going on? There's something wrong going on at your house. Really? Yeah. Not mac for and Thanksgiving. Cheese? What's just, all right, well. Oh, man. I, Gotta have some good homemade mac and cheese. All right, whose who's favorite was that? Something's not going to feel Ah, uh, right. yes. Dale. <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying to think of your name. I'm going, God, what is your name? I'm going, Darren, Derek. Dave, 
Okay. <laughs> I think he's. Ta- this is our video producer, Dale. He's. Uh, I think. I think he told me his name one time. So. That's number five. Now four, it just says bread. No, it just says oh. bread. I. I mean, I, I don't know rolls, about that. Like, do you, I mean, is that number four on the list? Just bread. Well, I mean, I, when I think I of mean, I think of those dry rolls that aren't heated or, up, or you know, be and, like one of those loaves, like those loaves. That I, I mean, bread is pretty. That's pretty wide. That's yeah, pretty broad. It's pretty All generic. Right. So number three, wow, gravy. That's like the favorite. It's not even a side. It's a. Gravy. It's a condiment. <laughs> it's a con. It's not a side. Gra- I mean, I guess some people this probably gravy. drink it right out of the gravy. Yeah, gravy bowl. Ah, it depends on what what kind of gravy it is. So, all right, number two is my favorite, and that is stuffing, or in the South, dressing, not stuffed into the turkey, but made in pans outside, dressing and stuffing. There's a difference in those here in the South. Mm-hmm. And the number one that's your favorite is. Mashed potatoes. Oh man! But you got to have some gravy with the mashed potatoes. Well, that's true. Yeah, you got to have that condiment. That and then if the, if the, if the turkey's the dry, then you have to have more gravy. And if the stuffing's dry or the dress, then you got to have more gravy. I mean, really, you can put. I mean, what yeah. don't you put gravy on? Yeah, that's true. I mean, I'd put it on just about everything. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, mashed potatoes, the bread that was up there. Yeah. Every, I cannot there. begin to tell you how hungry I am, and I know our listeners and viewers are. <laughs> right now yeah. but it's okay your thanksgiving meal is coming up and we're going to talk in this uh, this last segment coming up uh, a little bit about some changes uh, that are going to be uh, happening in social security for 2020 you know we t- we talk about the five stars in our in, in the last segment you know i think when people think of retirement they generally think of well i've got some money put away in my 401k and then i'll start taking social security you know but that thing moves around all the time. The ages move around. The taxes move yeah. around. So we'll talk a little bit about time. that coming up, too, yeah. Yeah, in, in the next segment. Um, what do you normally – what's one of the biggest mistakes that people are, are making now in, in their retirement uh, that, that you see coming in? Is it, is, is it the asset allocation? Is it, is it taking retirement too early or taking Social Security too early? That's, that's probably one of the – well, that, well, you got a, a few things. One, one you know, people think Social Security, oh, I'm going to get it while the getting's good. And so sometimes they take it at the wrong time and they're leaving a whole lot of money on the table that, that um, you know, they should be getting way more income from their Social Security than they really are. And so that's one thing. But a lot of times it's uh, – a lot. the biggest thing is people keep their plan in their head. There's usually either the husband or the wife that's handling the finances in the family. And if something happens to them, if they pass away prematurely, where's the plan? And so you got to have a written plan, uh, just kind of like with the, you're making a turkey, right? You don't want, you don't want the, the recipe to be in grandma's head, right? She needs to write that recipe down so that it can last from generation to generation. Good point. So, you know, since we're talking turkey today. But, but there's a recipe for success in retirement, just like there's a recipe for having an amazing turkey. And we got to make sure that we're clear on what it is that we're really trying to accomplish. But you got to make sure that you, first of all, you got to have a plan on what you're trying to accomplish and you got to have it written down. And so that's the end result. That's the, that's the dish that you want to make, whatever that is. That's right. And then putting the right ingredients in to accomplish that goal of whatever it is. And that's a great visual of, of thing, you know, and a great way to look at it. You know, if you, if you want a great Thanksgiving meal, you probably don't go out and buy a case of ramen noodles, which I may or may not have done my freshman year of college. Or if you're messing up, maybe you just go to Denny's, right? And you go to or you can go to Denny's, Denny's and get frozen peas. But you can get frozen peas at Denny's. You know, frozen peas just have that. They're just not. But it's actually a really good an analogy for what we're talking about because you sure. got your life goals, right? And let's just say it's it's cooking an amazing turkey. But then you got recipes to be able to make that happen. Right. It depends on what type of turkey do you want. Deep fried turkey? Do you want an oven baked turkey? Do you want a smoked turkey? Like, what is the kind of turkey you want? So you got that recipe to make that happen, and then you got different ingredients. And so what what you really have in, in the industry that I'm in is you have a bunch of ingredient salesmen just trying to sell you why their ingredients are better than somebody else's. And, and people have accumulated all these different ingredients throughout their lifetimes. So the ingredients you can call them investments, and a lot of times people have these things: stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, all this stuff. And they don't even know why they have it and how that's really going to accomplish their goal. We'll pick that up uh, right after the break coming up. Uh, Stay with us. And if you want to get in touch with Patrick, that number is 770-545-8881 or BellaAdvisors.com. Another segment to go on this Thanksgiving edition of Five Star Retirement.
Welcome back to Five Star Retirement, the Thanksgiving edition here. We're getting you set for Thanksgiving, of course, coming up uh, later this week. And a lot of folks will be traveling. A lot of folks will be taking time off work. For whatever reason, there'll be Black Friday shopping, which for the life of me, I have never understood why any human have being... Ever, have you ever done that? I have, and nor will I ever do that. Yeah. There's two things that I will never do. One is get up on July 4th, the most humid day of the year, and go run with 60,000 people <laughs> down Peachtree Street. <laughs> and the other is stand in a line for a cheap Chinese television set. No, no, no. Yeah, I don't get it. And people are getting in fights. People are getting in fights over this stuff. Uh, unbelievable. As so, I'm telling you, as soon as online shopping became a thing, like on dial-up, on AOL, I was like, are you are you kidding me? I can shop here, and it comes to my door? I've been doing that since, like, day one. I want to say I bought everything last year on Amazon. Right. Or online uh, for Christmas. It was It's the best. Everything comes in, and then it's already in a box, right? You just have to put wrapping paper it's around it. Oh, and, and they'll even put it in wrapping stuff if you check. Are you kidding me? It came completely oh, I got to give you a high five on that All one right? because, I mean, yeah. I, you know, it's either that or going to CVS for gift bags because this guy ain't wrapping. Uh -huh. Now, my mom, she would get the curling ribbon out. And I, anyway, we'll talk about that on the, uh, on the Christmas edition. All right, I have two myths to dispel. Yeah, let's do this. I have two. Number one, Georgia is not the peach state. I mean, we are officially, but do you realize that there's another state that grows more peaches than us? Um, what, what, okay, if, if I had to pick a state, I would guess Florida. South Carolina. South Carolina. South Carolina peaches. actually produces more peaches than us. We actually produce more blueberries. Oh, I thought it was pecans. I would have thought. Nope, that's blueberries. But, so that's a myth, and I'm sorry, you know, blueberries. we are the peach state. We're really we have a blueberry peach. state. Yeah, right, right, right. Wow. Right? Who knew? The other myth that we shall dispel for Thanksgiving here is that pumpkin pie, not number one on the favorite list. And we're at the dessert section here because we're at the end of the, the last segment of the show. So see, I wouldn't put I wouldn't put pumpkin pie number one. You don't think so? See, to me, it just it's clearly number I mean, one. But it's I not. Mean, it seems like it for but Thanksgiving. You think right? What we we're talking about earlier, where you know the first Thanksgiving and the stereotype stuff that right, was on the right. table, right? The you had the turkey, and then you got the pumpkin pie. So you would think that would be number one. Well, that pumpkin pie has to have a big dollop of cool whip on it. It really does. Cool whip. <laughs> so um, <laughs> some people will get that. Yes. Um, so number one is actually apple pie, which is not my favorite pie, but I know See, I think everybody in the room. That's my favorite. Now, Throw some if ice it's cream hot on that, with or ice some, cream. Or some cool whip. Some cool whip. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you putting so much emphasis on the H? Whip. <laughs> so, yes, or some real dairy top, well, no, Cool Whip is actually a hydrogenated vegetable oil that's been whipped into something. It's, it's non-dairy. But um, what are some other ones? We we had some other ones pulled up up there. Uh, so pumpkin pie is number two. Sweet potato pie. I, that's, you know, you have sweet potatoes I, like with the <clears throat> meal. So I don't think I've ever had sweet potato pie. I don't pie. think I have either. Now, pecan pie, which, by the way, in the South, you can't say pecan. Okay, you just can't. It's pecan is the word. I'm sorry to I'm sorry to hurt anybody feeling it. You say yeah, pecan. yeah. I think you're going to cause an uproar. That's going to that's going to cause an uproar. Anything uproar. causes an uproar today. So pecan pie. People like the pecan um, pie is a good one. Oh, carrot cake is on the list too. Man, that's carrot one of those cake. things that can be. Mm. You know, extra, I, I saw the that said an extra serving of vegetables. Yeah, right. Pumpkin roll. What is a pumpkin roll? I, I, do you you guys know what it is? Okay, so you guys so our had, producers know what pumpkin. You, you guys oh, have I, had pumpkin roll. Okay, so it's. Man, that does Man, look good. It it's got the good. little cream cheese swirled in yeah. there. Oh, yeah. Man. It's kind of like I'm carrot cake, but pumpkin cake. Yeah, right? Yeah. All right. So, uh, and then. Pumpkin roll. Have mm. you, and I mm. guess mince meat is a Christmas thing, right? That's a. Or, I'm not eating anything called mince meat. Right? That's a horrible thing. And then the other one is uh, I had a girlfriend that liked rhubarb pie. Mm. Mm. So, you, a rhubarb is like licorice. It is. It is. You. It is here, or it's. It's not. You know. There's. There's no in between. So, um, what about you? What's your favorite? Apple pie. Oh, so apple pie is your apple favorite. pie. Okay. Oh yeah. Throw right. some. Throw some vanilla ice cream on it. Yes. All right. Some cool whip. Some cool whip. All right. So seven seven zero five four five eighty eight eighty one is the number to get in touch with uh, Patrick and and Bella Advisors. And Patrick, you know, you've you've got such a great heart. I say this all the time, but I love people that really have a passion for what they do, for what they believe in. 
And, you know, as we get toward the end of this segment, and, and a lot to be thankful for. I mean, we've had a great year. The, the economy is, is very strong. I think the U.S., uh, at least in my estimation, without getting too political, uh, is, is, in a good, is in a good trajectory right now. Yeah, it's booming. You know, it's booming um, right now. So well, we're going to talk a little bit about um, some – it looks like uh, this year that Social Security is only going to get about a 1.2% increase. Mm-hmm. Uh, COLA is the, is the government likes their cost of living adjustment. But it was like 2.8% this past, in 19. So it was one of the biggest ones in a while. So it's uh, so it's going to be a little bit smaller next year. Yeah, over the last ten years, it's been about uh, I want to say like one point three, one point four percent is on average. average. And okay. and from from the beginning, it's more like two and a half. But what's happening is the government doesn't want to give you raises on your social security and you know those cost of living adjustments because it's more money out of the fund and they've got to be able to fund that over time. And the same thing for government pensions and things of that nature. So they have this thing called the consumer price index that they base it off of. And what happens is they pull things out that they don't want to count towards inflation. So they pull out healthcare costs. They pull out, um, uh, what is it? Um, Consumables and energy costs. And I'm like, well, what else is there? (laughs) That sounds kind of like everything. After they pull all those things out, what is there? So there's this consumer price index urban, which is the real rate of inflation. So people don't think there's inflation right now, but there's totally inflation. Uh, it, it's just they're they're not telling you that. So so they keep pulling things out so they don't have to give raises on the Social Security. Remember the scene in The Wizard of Oz when they pull the, the big curtain back and he's yanking the levers and everything. Pay no mind to that man behind the curtain. That's kind of what I feel like the government. I mean, there's all these numbers and stuff. And, and it, it when people start talking about Social Security, I know that people say, well, I'm just, I'll just take it at 62. Mm-hmm. But if if you do that and you're still working – or if you don't need that money, you're you're leaving a ton of money you're on the table. Leaving a ton of money on the yeah. table. Would you, you say eight percent a year? Eight percent a year. Yeah, each year that you defer it, you get an eight percent raise in your lifetime income. So think of think about Social Security as lifetime income, where you're going to get that lifetime paycheck for the rest of your life, and right. and then you got to also be thinking about your spouse too, because if you're married, you don't get to keep both Social Securities if one spouse passes away. The surviving spouse gets to keep the higher of the two Social Securities. So it might make sense while you guys are both living, but if one spouse predeceases the other, and and the ladies tend to outlive us men, that's one of the biggest growing poverty groups in the country right now is widowed women. And there and there probably isn't one month that goes by where, I, where I, I'm not sitting down with some kind of widow where somebody passed away unexpectedly and we got to try to figure stuff out because they have no idea what's going on. And I think that's the biggest thing. You know, we, we've talked in other segments about swan money, which I've, mm-hmm. I've actually in my QuickBooks account now, I do have a what's called a swan account. That's what I'm talking about. You know, sleep well at night money. Yes, and it's, it's well our capital night. reserve account for, mm-hmm. for, for my business. Um, but, you know, to, to have that peace of mind knowing that, you know, you're, you, you're taking care of your family, that, you know, Whatever it is that you're aiming for in in your your golden years of retirement, the bottom line is that people are living a lot longer, especially especially men or especially women. I'm mm-hmm. sorry, especially women. <laughs> men are still dying before women generally, um, like you said. But you know, if somebody comes to you and they're not in good health, you know, I guess that changes the equation too. You know, if if they're getting ready to retire, but maybe their health is questionable, mm-hmm. you know, then then it might behoove them to take Social Security that, early. You know, a, then there's other yeah. there's all these factors yep. to think about that you know that you can help guide, but it's that one on one personal guidance. It's that face to face sitting down with somebody. I know that's a a weird concept today in our digital world, but you know when you're talking about something, you know, somebody may have amassed a half a million, a million, five million dollars. You know, they've worked hard for that money. You know, and, and you helping them and that that's what, you know, you that's what you do every single day. And like we say, pretty much just about every show. I mean, the first time that you do something is typically not the best time that you do it. And you got to have some kind of financial ally and somebody that you're talking to. It's just for an, for an example, we've been talking turkey today because Thanksgiving's coming up. But if you don't know how to cook a turkey, what are you going to do? You're going to start looking for a recipe and how to do it together. You're not uh, you're not going to try to make it up on your own and make up your own recipe. You could. You could. But it could be a total failure. I'll tell you this. I tried cooking a, a chocolate cake this one time and talking about a recipe. So the recipe called for eggs. And I'm like, well, I don't have any eggs. <laughs> so I'm just not going to use eggs. And I'm just going to cook this cake. So I, so, I, so I cook this cake. Everything's going great until I tried to take the cake out of the pan after I cooked it. Right. And, 
And then I realized very quickly that the eggs are what keeps the cake. Right. Hold, hold Recipes are there the for reasons. It's like the glue. And, and, sure. Right. Yes. It's in, you know, in. It was still I, delicious. It's though. a lot easier to find that. And, and look, I, I, I've i substituted coffee creamer for milk before in 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 recipes. Okay. Didn't cut, didn't didn't work out so well. So this is a guy thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is like putting a, a shirt in the dryer out of the hamper and saying, well, I could wear it one more day because as, uh, as what's his name said, uh, you know, warm equals clean. Foxworthy. Jeff Foxworthy. That was his thing. Anyway, we've come to the end of the segment. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. A lot to be thankful for. Make sure that you you get Patrick on your, your calendar, 770-545-8881, 770-545-8881. Find out more about Bella Advisors on the web at bellaadvisors.com. Great show, sir, and yes, sir. enjoy that turkey and that apple pie. Yeah, and don't forget, in the next five callers, free turkeys. Free turkey. For schedule your time to come in, free turkeys. All right, at least 15 pounds. At least 15 pounds. There you go. That's a good size. All right. All right. Happy Thanksgiving, uh, everybody. Have a good one. We'll see you next show. Make sure to join us here once again on Five Star Retirement.